Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today with a little project that includes no butterflies. Not a butterfly in sight. They've all flown away. So, it's this. I think it's pretty cute. Uh, I'm going to call it Plenty of Pockets because it's got plenty of pockets. Uh, I've made it out of one 12 by 12 sheet and I've used Tim Holtz design paper. And then I've used half a sheet of 8x8. You don't have to have 8x8. You can use a portion of a sheet of, yeah, a 12x12. Or use your scraps, yeah? The main body is one sheet of 12x12. So let's show it you. Uh, I've got this, um, yeah, it's like a faux leather cord that I got from N beads wrapped around it. I've popped this little tag on. That's donkey's years old, came from Making Memories. Yeah, you people in the USA will probably have heard of those. I think they were an American brand. I used to get them off eBay back in the day before I had my kids. And I just, just thought that looked cute. So that wraps around there like that. And that lifts up. And inside we've got a piece of ephemera. These are the bits of ephemera that I got in Happy Mail the other day. I still don't know who sent it me, so thank you again. And these are the ones. It's the Remnants, Layers and the Expedition Ephemera Pack. Oh, there's a few lost in there. So yeah, that's what I've used. Also to decorate the front, I've just used... These are from various packs. When I get a new pack of Tim Holtz Ephemera, I dump them all in the same tray. And I just get another when it's getting a bit low. So that's that. And I'll show you the back next. Turn it over to the back. We've got another little tab on there. So that lifts up. We've got a pocket there again. More of the Happy Mail Ephemera. And another one there. I've fastened that with one of the uh, thin Velcro dots, the clear ones. Uh, I will put a link to where you can get those on eBay at the moment in UK. I think they're freely available in US, but there doesn't appear to be any on Amazon UK at the moment. There are, but they're very expensive. Uh, it's the big pack I buy. I'll put the link. I think it, it's, it's £7 for about 56 pairs, which is a bargain. Anyway, so that's that. So that's I just put the Velcro dot on there so that weren't flapping about when you unwrapped everything. So we'll go back to the front and then I'm going to open it up. And we've got another pocket there, more ephemera again. I've just put a tiny little bit of decoration on. It flaps open again and we've got two more pockets. Now these pockets are the ones I use the piece of 8x8 for. So you can do whatever you want inside. When you've made this, you'll have three blank spaces. Yeah, so put whatever pockets on you want, pop notepads in. You could even put a few pages in, make it into a teeny tiny little journal. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. I've made this to just pop inside a bigger project at some point. So that's that, another pocket there, another piece of ephemera. And that's it. So how many pockets have we got? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, yeah, so we've managed to get seven pockets there out of one sheet and a bit. So I'll show you how I made it. Right, I've got the paper I'm going to use here. Uh, the paper I've used is Tim Holtz. This is an old collection, this, because I've had it a long time. It's very grungy and dark. And it's the Lost and Found. Yeah. Uh, I'll give a quick flip. Look how dark and grungy that is, yeah. It probably, it's probably made my camera look really dark now. You've got the usual, one, two, three, there's a lot, I can't count that, one, two, three, six, six, thirty-six little squares on there, that's a lot of little squares. Look at that on my times table. And then you've got the four befores, then the full sheets. So we've got a map, very grungy. Now what I like about this is a few of the pages, although they're directional, they're not very directional, and that's how I've made this one it's got tape measures you can see they go all different ways if you look again on the inside you will notice that the paper is upside down but you probably didn't notice look well it's sideways i did it sideways yes yeah, so some of them are upside down some of them are sideways but you really don't notice so if you don't have any non-directional papers 
this is a good one to use. So I've grabbed two and you'll see what I mean. Because some things are the right way up and some are sideways, yeah? If I just turn it to the side, it still looks good, yeah? I don't know whether to do that one or that one. I think I'm going to do that one. I'll do that one with the writing. Right, so I'll move that out of the way. Right, I've had to write down where to score because I'll just forget. I'll just forget, I will. Right, you want to put your paper with your writing upside down, yeah? So as I've just said, I'm going to turn it sideways to start. So that's the paper the correct way up. I want to use it sideways, so that's sideways. Now I want to turn it upside down. Da -da. I hope that didn't confuse you. If your paper's just completely non-directional, stick it on upside down. Right, scoring time. So we're going to score at four and one eighth of an inch. I will put this in description. So all the way down. I always do it twice. And then eight and a quarter. Are we all the way on the screen? I'll just smidge, smooch down a little bit so you can see the top. Eight and a quarter. I've not done one of these one sheet things for a while. Right, now you want to turn it to the left one. Yeah. And we want to score at three and a half and nine. Three and a half. And nine. Just ignore all them on my scoreboard. They're for when I'm making my envelopes. You know, when I'm mass making so I know where to score without having to count. <laughs> right, so we're done with the scoreboard now. So I'll put that back. Right, we need to do some cutting. So let me get my head around it. Get my head around it where we're going to cut. Da -da. <laughs> I'm going to have to see which is top and which is bottom now. Yeah, that's the t that's the top, silly woman. Right, I'm going to cut the bottom first. So I'm just going to turn it over to see where I'm cutting. Right, can you see the bump from where I've scored? You want to cut, you're just taking that out. It's like a smidgen you're taking out. And I use the bump as my guide. We're going just up to that first score line. One. I'm not going quite all the way up because I'll finish that off with my pointy scissors. That just made me think of pointy sisters. Jump for my love. Did they sing that? They could have. It's one of them. You think you know something instantly, and then you think, "Do I know that? Am I right?" It's from my era anyway. 80s. Didn't they do that? Didn't somebody remake that, didn't they? Girls Aloud remade it, didn't they, for that Love Actually film? Right, so that's that. Then I'm just going to turn this over to get those bits off. I like to do these like this. Yeah, I think there's less chance that it's going to rip on those points then. If you just pull it off, then I think, yeah, they could rip. So, you can see now those bits are missing. So, now turn it. This this is what's going to be your bottom pockets, yeah? And they're going to be your top. So, this is your top. Now, on this one, we're going to cut this side. So, that's your wide one that's four and an eighth inch wide. We're going to cut this out. I went a bit wonky there, there. squinky dink. <laughs> can I always straighten it up? Put your hand on desk, woman. You can cut it a lot easier then instead of... <sighs> Shaking like a leaf, trying to hold your hand in midair. That's that. That's that. I'm just going to turn it over to cut that off. There we go. Right, now, on this final one, instead of cutting there, we're going to cut there. Yeah? This is the smaller piece, yeah? 
So I want to cut either side of that again. Get rid of your bumps and lumps. He did that rather confidently and fast. I hope it was straight. Getting a bit carried away there, I think, missus. Jump for my love. I've got that song right stuck in my head now. Yesterday's song at day was uh, Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves by Cher. Just in case you wanted to know. Right, so I hope you're keeping up with this. <laughs> so, first thing, fold all your little flaps over. And then you'll start to see it come together as a piece. Don't make any final scores with your bone folder yet. Right, this is this is the one that flummoxes me. Right, that has to go sideways and then it goes over there. There we go. <laughs> oh dear. Do I know what I'm doing? Yeah, I do actually. It's, I'm just doing a good impression of someone who doesn't. So turn it over like that. So that's your blank bit. That's your bit in the middle. Then that... turns over like that that goes over like that then we've got the front and can you see how miraculously my writing's right way around there and there so that's your front we open it up we've got that it's upside down there but i'm not too fussed because i can just stick some on it maybe i may even stick that on yeah then it doesn't bother me then you open that up there yeah, so some of this is sideways, some's right way, some's wrong way, but I don't mind. Then we turn that over to the back and that flips up. We've got our pocket there and our pocket there. So I don't know who's more shocked, you or me, that I got that right. Yeah. Right, so it now resembles that one. Oop, fling away. Yeah, not quite as grungy, but it resembles it. Right, now let's come in and do some corner rounding and do some notch notching. Uh, I've got my, my tab punch. I threw it on the floor a couple of times, covered it in ink. don't know if that worked. It still won't punch through um, thick layers, but it will punch through one layer. So I'm going to use it because I really love the shape of that notch. So we want to put a notch there. And then we start seeing gypsies, tramps and thieves again. So that's that notch. Use a circle notch. Use whatever notch you want. You've got half an inch worth of overlap or even an inch worth. And turn that over. We want to put another notch there. That's that. And another notch there. And we want to put a notch there. Notch, notch. There we go. Right, the only, th I think I only rounded the front and back flaps. Yeah, I did. I just rounded the top of the front and back flaps there. So grab my rounder. And I did it with the medium one, the quarter inch one. The one that's the same as the small end on the We Are Memory Keepers chomper, if you happen to have that one. Like that. And then this one. There you go. Now, the next thing I did is I came in and I inked and I inked and I inked and I did loads of inking. So I'm going to pause while I do that inking because that's going to bore you solid because there is quite a bit of inking to do on this. And if you're making it without inking, 
and I'm going very grungy with my ink today. Look, I'm using, I'll just show you, Ground Express, ex, Espresso, not Espresso, Ground Espresso. Yeah, and it's just Distress Ink, not Oxide. So I'm just going to pause while I get that done. And I'm back, all inked. Right, now I'm going to make an awful mess on my desk because after I made my other one, I scooped up all the bits I'd not used. Whee! <laughs> and now I've put them back. So there you go. Right, I was going to use the other half of the 8 by 8 that I used on the last one, but do you know what? I've lost it. I don't know where it's gone. Now, I don't know if I've got the front of this 8 by 8 pad to show you. It's called Etc. It's 8x8 and what it has in is just a few sheets from each of Tim Holtz's different collections, which is absolutely brilliant, yeah? But like I said, you can use scraps for this next bit. So do you know what? I think on this one, I'm going to use my scraps, yeah? Because I've got my nice posh scrap bag of mainly Tim Holtz here, yeah? And I'm going to pull some out of this. So that's writing, so it'll go with anything and everything, won't it? Right. So. Right, before we uh, get through them, let's do some gluing. I've not glued it yet, have I? Do you know, if I'm not uh, totally on the ball, I don't think. <laughs> right, I want to do some gluing and put some tabs on. Now, these tabs that I've cut for this one, they're the ones I cut using the dies from, uh, that I got from AliExpress. Yeah, here they are. They're the tab dies. They're very similar to a, yeah, to a familiar tab punch that is no longer available. And when it is, comes up on eBay for absolutely stupid prices. So you get three in that size, which is bigger than the one I've cut, is it? Oh no, that's the size I used. Then you get three even bigger ones and you get four of these teeny tiny ones, which are just so cute. I might use the little one for some extra tabs on this one I'm making today. I just thought I'd show you them again. I've got lots of other dies in there. They didn't come in the set, but the set does come in this cute little folder. I'll put the link. I know a lot of you have been and bought it already. It did sell out at one point, then it come back in stock. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, aren't I? Waffle, waffle, toil and truffle. <laughs> just ignore me. Right, now, I'm going to do a bit of gluing. Now, if you remember I said at the beginning, don't get your bone folder on these creases, because sometimes with these kind of projects, if you start bone folding stuff, it doesn't quite line up properly. So what I like to do is get my gluing done before I do any bone folding whatsoever. So what we've got to glue is this front pocket. I've done all my inking rather grungily. I really like this paper. So I'm using my art glitter. I've filled it up and I've filled it right at top. So it's I've been getting a bit too much out again. Oh, I seem to have done okay with that. There's no, no uh, mad squeezing and cursing my glue today. It should work. There we go. But you don't need art glitter. PVA will do for this. I think everyone on YouTube says we use certain glues on camera because they dry quicker. And it's true. Off camera, I'd do this with PVA on card. It's not going to wrinkle it. Art glitter does wrinkle less than um, some other glues. And I never squish, press down really hard because that just squishes it out. I just gently keep doing that until it's stuck so that's the front one now we turn over we've got the back one so do exactly the same am i still on camera yeah because you can see me Whee. i had one of my subscribers ask when they're gonna when you're gonna see me on camera i'm just very camera shy i am i wouldn't be comfortable on camera i just wouldn't I might, I might put another photo up. I did actually have my hair cut yesterday. So I'll tell you what, I might put a photo up of my new hair cut. Yeah, I went mad. <laughs> well, I think a lot of us, in the lockdowns and everything, we've just not bothered doing out with his hair, have we? And mine have grown quite long. I mean, it was right down past my shoulders. And I've gone and had it cut really, well, not really short. 
it's short at back it's like <laughs> bottom at back's like not even an inch long it's like an inverted shaggy bobby thingy majiggy i quite like it and it should just have grown enough for me to get it in some kind of clip or just even a headband for the summer because in the summer i really don't like having my hair on my face i think that's why i've just left my hair during the last couple of years where what's been going off i haven't bothered going to hairdressers i've not wanted to go and sit breathing the same air as someone else for a couple of hours although i weren't there that long because i didn't bother having it dyed because uh, the hair, yeah, this is a good hairdresser, this for you. She agreed that my own natural hair colour looked quite good and to give that a chance before sticking dye on it. So, yeah, she did herself out of business. <laughs> Although that was she was sick of seeing me. Because <laughs> I've been that day before with one of the girls. But, yeah, my mum had really nice grey hair. The kind of grey hair that people would ask her why she'd had it dyed. When she hadn't, it was just her own grey hair. So I'm hoping mine is going to do... Look at that. Looks like I've smoked 20 cigs a day, that, doesn't it? I'm hoping mine's going to be as nice. Right, I'm going to do this last one. This is all lining up pretty nicely. I'm quite happy with this. I had to do a little bit of wiggling with my first one. And my art glitter's behaving really well now. I've filled my bottle up. And I've been remembering to put my pin in. Yeah, hey, although I'd have put it in today, I'm not sure. I'd only just made that other one though. I'd messed about trying to make one at weekend and it just weren't happening. And then today I've sat down and made one in like just over an hour. So some days it just doesn't happen, does it? Some days the mojo is not there. So I think that's all as gluing done. Yeah, I'm really liking this design. So now we want to stick a couple of uh, tabs on. I've already got a couple cut, so I'm going to use them. Yeah, I've showed you the dies. Oh, I also had someone ask if you can cut dies without using a die cutting machine. And the answer is yes, you actually can. There's a few people done videos on it. And I tried it and I wouldn't recommend it. There's a method where you do it with your bone folder and trace the edge of the die. Now this is the bone folder I used and it's now got permanent grooves in. And there's a method where you use a rolling pin. I've not tried it, but uh, I know others who have and they said it takes ages. And, ooh, I don't think I needed out quite so grungy on that, did I? I'm using espresso. Espresso, why do I want to call it espresso? Yeah, I just dipped that a little bit too much in ink. I'll see if I like this when I've inked it up. This card is a little bit lighter than the one I've made the main body from. Oh yeah, I like it. I'm liking the grunginess. This again, these were some scraps of Tim Holtz I used. I only know the Tim Holtz because I recognise that. I don't really recognise front that much. Don't know. Don't ask me what that were. And a clue. Could be out. You don't have to use all Tim Holtz. I just did. I think because when you use Timmy stuff, you know it just all goes together, doesn't it? He likes to throw stuff together randomly. Sometimes a bit of randomness looks good. Yeah, there's no wonder I look like I've been smoking. No, I gave that up years ago. Right. So... I'm going to pop that on there. Again, using art glitter because it dries quicker. I mean, once you've done this basic, but you can go to town, decorate it how you want, stick extra pockets in. You don't have to put these tabs on. That's that. Then we'll put this one on the back. Have I missed an edge there, Inkin? I think I've missed that edge. Yeah, that's better. There was so much inking to do doing the inside. I've missed some of the inside there, look. Inks it, eh? If in doubt, ink everything. I tried to think which bits were going to be showing and which wits, which wits, which bits weren't. Wee. Pop 
you are. Yeah, I really love these dies. Yeah, I did. I do still have the file for my Cricut if anybody's interested in it. But someone emailed me the other day. Cricut charge you a dollar for it though, because I used a shape that's uh, not free. Or if you've got Cricut access, it is free. If you don't know anything about Cricut, just ignore me at this point. But I think these dies are so much easier because you can just cut one out of anything you want. You've got to plan what you're going to cut when you're doing a full sheet on the Cricut cutting machine. Right, um, Velcro dots. Have I waffled about Velcro dots? I can't remember. Yeah, I've found these on uh, eBay. The 56 package for £7 something. Uh, at the moment, you only get 15 in a pack on Amazon for £6, which is like extortion. Right, so the back one is where I want the Velcro dots. So what I do with these is put the furry white one on the back of the tab. Yeah, then I get my little see-through hooky one, as I call it. And pop it on the back of the fluffy one. I'm sure there's a hair on that. Yeah, I may still be shedding hairs. <laughs> because, like I say, I had it cut yesterday and I haven't washed it yet. Right, and then just close that up. So that's your back. Then the front, I've just punched a hole through using my cropper dial. I've used the big hole and I've done it in the middle. Normally I do it off to one side, but I thought I'm going to do it in the middle for a change. There we go. And I can't, I used a bronze eyelet last time. I'm going to use this one this time. I'm going to use that one. It's like a dull silver. Do I want a back on this? Yeah. I want one of these metal backs. Because it just makes it a little bit neater on the other side. <laughs> I bet I couldn't do that again if I tried. Did you see? Now you see it, now you don't. I've flipped that up and eyelets just flicked off somewhere on my desk. I've no idea where. So let's get another one out. Wow. I know I like a good game of tiddlywinks, but that's ridiculous. Tiddly eyelets. It's not quite middle that, but I can live with that. Ooh. <laughs> Just go, go. I don't even know if that's right size back. Well, we'll see, won't we? Try the worker, it won't. What's worse that's going to happen, we'll have to take it off and put a new tab on. Well, there we go that's quite nice and that's quite nice yeah I like that in silver for a change I think it'll go better with a little tag that I'm going to put on right just craft a lunch just knocking all sorts of stuff over like you do right so that's that so we're all glued at this point if you want to do any bone folding do it now but you know what I'm not going to bother that's all folded quite nicely and fit together quite good so what we need now is a bit of decoration, a closure and some pockets on inside. So like I said, I'm going to use my scraps for pockets this time. So what we got? That's not a Timmy scrap, but do you know what? I like it. That's by uh, Hero Arts, I think. Yeah, I like that. Could I get three pockets out of that? Perhaps only two. What else we got in here? We've got all the insecty bits, but then I'll be tempted to stick a butterfly on, won't I? Which I said I weren't doing. Not a butterfly in sight were my actual words. Oh, that's nice. So I need to stick to that. I've got a bit of wood grain. Hmm, not feeling that wood grain. What we got here? More Timmy bit. Oh, that's not Timmy. That Again, that's another bit of... Um, yeah. Oh, I like that. I don't like that, but I won't need that. And there's some squares. Yeah, I'm going to go for that because I just like it, even though it's not Tim Holtz. So, I'll tell you how I made my pockets from an 8x8 piece. 
So what I'll do is I'll cut this down to as though it was half an eight b uh, as though it was an eight by eight sheet. Because then I used half of the eight by eight sheet. I'm just scratching about on the floor trying to find my trimmer that's big and chompy. Here we go, because we need to cut this at eight inches. Right. So I'll cut that down to eight and I'll cut it down to four. Then we can imagine that's half an 8 by 8 sheet of paper, can't we? And then I'll show you how I cut it from there. Right. So, I cut it. Now, these pieces here, that what each one of those measures 4 and 1 8 of an inch, yeah? So, I cut a piece off that was just under, actually. Just under 4. Which side do I want? I want that side without the black bit on. Just un if you cut it on four, you'll still have a bit of trouble closing your little folio. So a smidgen, not even eighth of an inch, perhaps about not even sixteenth. It is actually a smidgen. Then I cut that in half again up to two inches. So you've got two pieces that measure just under four by two if you're using scraps. So that were those two. And then for this pocket, what did I cut that down to? I cut it down to three by three. So you want a scrap that's three by three. You can then use those. You could use those to make your tabs, I suppose. That's that. And then when I decide I cut, I just randomly cut a corner off. I don't measure it, me. I just put it in my trimmer like so. And chop it off because I just like that shape of a pocket. Then I use my tab punch again to make some notches. Nachos, mmm, got some nachos. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Nacho cheese. No, just nachos. I'll put his own cheese on, mate. So, oh, I quite like that. It goes well, doesn't it? Even though it's not Timmy. So, let's get... I won't pause while I ink this. I'm being quite rough with my ink. When I'm doing something really grungy, when the paper's really grungy, I'm not nearly as careful with my ink. Because I think it looks good how you get... It's different everywhere and bits are... Going all over. I just like it. If in case you're wondering what this is, it's a piece of Ranger, it's called cut and dry foam, you buy it in a sheet. I don't know if it's exactly the same as what's on end at Dobin Tools, you might have to ask Tim about that one. But it's similar enough to work really well. Rather than buy a new uh, tool and more ends for colours that I don't use as often, I just use a piece of this. Also, I don't like taking those off and on and off the end of the tools because you get your fingers inky. Look at that. You get your fingers inky, she says. With inky fingers ain't well ever. Right, so let's glue these on. Who I remembered to put my pin in. How good am I? I got a bit giddy then and put too much glue on. I really need to calm myself down a bit. Kids holidays and the behaving, I am giddy. There's a countdown on. My youngest loves playing The Sims on Xbox, Sims 4. And she's been waiting for this new expansion pack that comes out. It was due to come out last week and then they announced that it was going to come out a week later. Oops. Yeah, a week later so they could release it on the same day that it was released in Russia. Oh dear, no, it's not a good day for Russia, is it? I'm not even going there. We don't want to know about that. We're crafting. We're in his craft rooms. Taking absolutely no notice of what's happening in the world at large. So, yeah. So, yeah, she's behaving because uh, she needs to behave to get this sim pack when it's released at 6pm. <laughs> sure, I'll get it. She came to me. What's GMT? What's 6 p.m. GMT? What time is that? I says, we are GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. 
So it's 6 p.m. our time. It's like, ooh. Because most of the sites you found it on, it just told you at release times in US time. And then I had to clue. I think it's depending on which um, time zone you're in, we're six or eight hours in front. And that's about all I know. All I know is I'm six hours difference to Oklahoma. <laughs> I've put those and I've not gone quite to the edge. I just like that look of a little bit of a... Because we've not gone quite up to the crease, I just like the look of it not being quite up to the edge on the bottom as well. I don't know why I just do. So that's that. We're getting there now, aren't we? We're cooking with a bit of gas now. Yeah, don't even mention gas. <laughs> Let's cook with some <laughs> dirt even. Show up, woman. Right. <clears throat> Put your Velcro dots away because you'll be crying if you can't find them next time you need them. Yeah, there's certain things that, yeah, get put away as soon as I finish with them every time because they're just too expensive to rebuy if you lose them. Right. Let's do a bit of decorating and putting in of ephemera. So what we got here... I think some of these, they're just too tall for this, or are they? Mm, a bit too tall. Can't use them. That one's a bit tall. We've got some smaller ones here. Speed. I'm looking for a small one to pop in here. Yeah. But not too small that it'll disappear. That will disappear. What's this? That might be too wide. Ooh, that might be nice. It's not going to fit you, daft woman. So we're just rifling through ephemera now. It's not really occurring. <laughs> Nothing other than a bit of rifling. Oh, I like some of these for decorating. Oh, that's nice. I could put a tag in there. A tag and a ticket. Yeah, so that's what's going in there. But we need something the right size for up here. What's that? Oh, that looks like a... Likely candidate. Perfect. So that's the back done. That were easy, weren't it? Now in the front, what we're going to have. Again, this is why I like the Timolts. It just everything goes, doesn't it? Could have a picture of Uncle uh, Fester with his cousins. Yeah, if you want if you want to name Uncle Fester's cousins, yeah, just pop it in comments below. My brain went blank then. What's that? Ooh, that's a bit modern, I think. It's too modern. I could state my desk. Ooh, I like that. That's gonna go there. I mean we could go mad and put some people in. Yeah, let's keep Uncle Fester company. Oh, I've found that half a sheet now that I couldn't find, you silly woman. And my ruler that I lost. Right, let's... There you go. You look very sad, mate. I think we need to put something cheerful in that pocket with you. That could be your dad, but why is he shorter than you? <laughs> Sometimes the... Um... Yeah, the perspective of these Tim Holtz people cracks me up. That's like a giant baby. We don't want you. Is she about right size? Why Why do all Tim Holtz's people look really miserable? Um, it, maybe they had hard lives. I don't know. She looks happy. Doesn't kid look happy? Looks happy. Right, so we've filled that with people. Now they want their tickets for wherever they're going. So that's your... Ticket or a postcard. There you go, that's your plane ticket, mate. And what do you want? You look like a bingo woman. <laughs> but that's too long, is it too long? It's just a bit too tall. Quite sad. So you can have a bus ticket. Yeah. Now let's scoop all that to one side. And let's find some bits to decorate. Right. Uh, we need something with a bit of colour, so we may have one of those. 
what, that's a double ticket but I think I might like it together as a double ticket special delivery I like that but I don't like that little ticket hanging off it so adios That might be a bit too much red. Oh, I don't know. I think I might like that. Let's grunge those up and see what they look like. So, as you can see, it doesn't really have a theme, this. <laughs> Other than people have had the bus tickets put in the pockets with them. So there you go. The Grand Hotel, that might be where they're going on bus. Monte Carlo. And I think I want a bigger one that says special delivery and I'm sure there is one. Yeah, there were one stuck in the bottom of that packet. Oh, that's a stamp. Where's it gone? The one that said special delivery that I've got stuck in the bottom of that packet. Here it is. Oh, it says parcel post. Mm. Oh, I've just seen something I like. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice to pop in one at pockets for a bit of colour. Yeah, we'll put that in with Uncle Fester. There we go. Yeah, I like that parcel post one. It's a bit bigger. Is it? No, I don't like it. I think we're going to stick with little special delivery. I won't kill myself making a decision. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. We could make that another little tuck spot, couldn't we? Putting something in. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's just glue that on three sides. Then I can tuck something in top. I don't know what yet. So we'll just put it a little bit further down front corner so that we can put something in it. And I'll put the special delivery underneath. Let's put a lid on that ink because I can see a disaster occurring any minute now. And put you over to that side. Are you straight enough? Yeah. Do you know, I don't think I want that red there. Now I want something different there. I've changed my mind. Do I want another ticket? Oh, I like that one. That ticket is a little bit more muted than that. Yeah. There'll be people saying, no, stick with the original. But I've changed my mind now. There we go. I might put that on one of inside pockets. So when that's dry, I'm going to find something to tuck in top. Right, let's get a little bit of... There you go. You can go there. So, yeah, I know that writing's upside down, but it's really not bothering me at all. I can live with it. And I want some things on here now. What about parcel post? Yeah. I'm really liking this red at minute, aren't I, on this one? Then people just look so miserable. They need a pop of red to cheer them up. Where did you find such miserable people, Tim? I wonder if it is a cheerful set. You ought to. Right, what we're going to pop on here. Let's have a little looky in my general Tim Holtz ephemera tub. What we got? I'm determined not to use a butterfly. I might use that. No butterflies, not no butterflies, no flowers. Oh, look at that tiny baby. He's not as uh, big as the others. They're in the wrong box. 
I'm, I won't stop halfway through and clean my box up. Oh, I might do that. What else we got? Can you even see from my head? <laughs> I just noticed I'm bent right over looking what I've got. Oh, I've got a little letter. Let's see. That specimen could be another little tuck spot, but my, no. no. I'm just going to put that central. But like I say, you just take your time, decorate this how you want. Whee. I think I want that middle one. Again, change my mind. But I'm allowed. And someone's saying I want that number 25 there. Yeah. Come hither. Do I want that or do I want that stamp? I want the number 25. There we go. So, I'm going to call that one a day. I like that. We'll just put the uh, closure on and we're all done. I could stay to my desk. I, I just can't stay tidy when I'm crafting, but no one's telling me I have to. So, I'm fine. Right, this is what I've put round it. It's, I think this is, if I, I'm not wrong, I don't, I'm not wrong, I could be. I think this is two millimetre. I do tell you how wide it is in my end beads video, but it hasn't got a size on, but you can do it any, any twine you want. Now, now I used 56 inches worth. Right, now I'm just going to measure that on the edge of my mat. If anyone ever wonders why I have this mat upside down, it's because I only have an inch measure along the bottom of it. Sorry, along the top of it. So I have my mat upside down so that the inch measure is here at the bottom. So there you go. Right. So that's 22 inches, 44 inches, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50 I used. Did a 50, not 56. 50 inches and cut it then I double it up pop that through I'll just check that I remembered right before I tie my tag on end so it goes around one two yeah 50 inches and then these are the little tags. I think I had one for each letter alphabet. Now I did put T on the other one for Timothy. Now if I've got H, <laughs> uh, yeah, I have. I'll put H on this one. So that's for T, Tim Holtz. Put those all back in. Right. And all I did, I did wrap it round before I tied my knot. Otherwise it might have been baggy. And I just threaded that on because of how wide this is one knot meant that that wasn't going to go slipping off I mean good luck with finding some of them they probably, they probably are some on eBay and then that just took some under there oh I'm going to put something in there didn't I, I said I'm going to tuck some in uh, rather than spend three hours looking I'm just going to tuck that in. Now I need something long and thin, don't I? Not something long and thin that doesn't have flowers or butterflies on. I reckon I'm looking in this book for a ticket. That's the first thing that comes to mind that will fit nicely. One of these. Uh, let's have this muted red one with the number 13 on it. I like a good number 13. Some people think it's unlucky. I just think it's a number. Well, it is a number. What's my sign, sir? I may be wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a bit too long. I suppose if we've been on bus, they may have torn bottom off. There you go. <laughs> So we've got I've torn bottom off and it fits in. So there we have it. Little Timothy Holtz paper. Plenty of pockets folio. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a whirl. And if you make one, tag me on Facebook or Instagram. And I'd love to have a look at it. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.